big week for the Steelers. Holy <laughs> cow. Very well, kind, of, kind of unexpected week. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, and I guess during our last podcast, we weren't sure what to expect. We definitely left it uh, in Omar Khan's hot hands say, what's he going to do? Well, let's wait and see. Well, it's been about a week or a week and change, and he's done a lot. So, I mean, there's really a lot to talk about. Um, you know, a lot of guys that have come in, a couple of guys that have gone. So, yeah, uh, pick your poison, Joe. Who, who's, who's impressed you so far the most? Well, the the whole Cam Sutton Peterson, Patrick Peterson thing is very interesting. Uh, I it's just it's just very interesting. Um, losing Cam Sutton sucks, but for the money that they that Detroit gave them, you can't blame the Steelers for letting them go. Is it? Do you agree? Yeah, I would. I mean, and I, we kind of thought that. I mean, it, it was going to be either he stays for, I don't want to say that the hometown discount, but, you know, would somebody come out there and splash some money? Well, somebody did, and he's going to be gone, and that's what happened, uh, you know. Uh, and that Detroit team quietly had a very good year defensively last year, uh, and now they just got better. So it would be interesting to see how the Lions do with, with Sutton there because I think he's a great addition to them. Uh, but, yeah, you know, they go and get Patrick Peterson. Uh, which is a guy, you know, I think four years ago we were hoping to get, uh, you know, and they bring him in. It's a very reasonable price. And at 33 years old, he's, he's definitely on his final years, but, but here's the thing, Joe, I think Patrick Peterson at 33 is still a little bit better than what Cam Sutton is at 27, 28. Hey, you know what? I, I, I think they're like two like different players. Yeah. So, um, you know, people are saying, Oh my God, Patrick Peters, he's so old. He's going to be, he's over the hill. He's, 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 he's forget about it. And I think his days is like shut down corner. One of the best corners in a league. Okay. Yeah. That's gone, but he could still be a part of, of a good defense, especially like, like in a zone scheme. I think that could work. Yeah, I think so too. And I think the Steelers have shown over the years, they've had a knack for bringing some of these guys in that are quote unquote past their prime or, you know, just not there anymore. And they end up getting the best out of them. And I, I think they're going to get the best out of Patrick Peterson. He's not going to want to fade away in the final years of his career as, you know, a guy that got burned or uh, wasn't in a good system. You know, he, he chose to come here. And I, I, I mean, I think he's happy being here and I, I do. Yeah. I think not only in his own scheme, but, you know, even if they have to go play, uh, you know, in a dime and man to man a little bit too there, I, I think he'll be good in the red zone. Uh, he's very good in between the 20 and the end zone. He, he's a tough, tough out. Uh, he run, he reads routes very well, and he plays very tough in the end zone. So I think he's a great addition in that aspect. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think getting Peterson basically guarantees that they will get they will draft a corner early. Yeah. I thought of you when they did that. As soon as they brought in Patrick Peterson, I'm like, well, I think that 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 solves what Joe and I talked about last time. What are they going to do in a draft? Well, now it, it's probably Witherspoon if he's there or Joey Porter Jr. Um, and it, it's I think it's funny as we get closer. Now you have all these a lot of these people coming out saying, well, I think Joey Porter Jr. is overrated. If you think Joey Porter Jr. is overrated, you're an idiot. And and look, I I, I don't have to have a Penn State shirt on to tell you that. I, I could easily put that pit hat on and tell you the same thing. He's a player. I, I've seen him play. Uh, and I'm not saying it because, yeah, I, I'm a Penn State fan. He has the tenacity that his dad has. He only gave up one touchdown in the last two years of his play. He is a great ball hog. He will swat the ball down. He will not make stupid plays. He's also the least penalized defensive back and defensive player on the Penn State Nittany Lions defense over the last three years. He's a smart football player. He works out just fine. Uh, and, and Witherspoon's just there, too. And Witherspoon, and I – he – he had a much better season statistically for a lot of reasons. First of all, he had all those interceptions. Uh, he almost single-handedly beat Michigan. Um, but he's been more of a late riser. He, he came on a little bit strong at the end of his junior year. This year he had a phenomenal season, arguably the best cornerback in the country, uh, and that's why he's ranked number one. So I think the Steelers win either way if they get either one of those guys. I'm not going to be disappointed if we don't get Joey Porter Jr. and we get Weatherspoon because I think it's a win. I, I think – I, I, I keep hearing that it's a deep draft for cornerbacks. Yes. And if that's the case, 
maybe they go tackle in the in at 17 and then uh corner at, at 32 or 49. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny you should bring that up because boy, does this offensive guard, offensive line look a lot different now, do they not? Um, if, if you don't go with Patrick Peterson, you got to go with Isaac Sumo. Am I saying all right, Sumelo? How does he say his name? Say Amolo, kind of like, kinda like kinda Paul kind of like Paul Amalu. Hey, we're good with that then. <laughs> um, you know, 2020, he missed eight weeks. He's had some injury issues until last year. He was he had a phenomenal season last year. And I think you picked up on this, Joe. You made the point with bringing his, bringing his coach over from the Eagles. They went and got this guy. Now, all of a sudden, you're improved there. I really like Mason Cole at center. I'm not sure. There's been a lot of hate for Mason Cole lately. Don't understand that. Uh, James Daniels had a great year at right guard. Uh, so now I think his offensive line looks drastically different. Uh, it does bring into question what they're going to do with Kel- Kevin Dotson. Is Dotson expendable now? Um. You know, he could, he is, I, I mean, Dotson is, you know, Dotson's definitely a backup now and uh, whether they could maybe get something for him to trade or maybe just have him, just have him be, you know, maybe they just believe in like great depth in the offensive line. Cause they got so lucky last year that n- none of their offensive linemen got hurt. That never yeah. happens. And that's never going to happen again. <laughs> Obviously somebody's going to get hurt. So maybe having yeah. him as a backup, I don't know, or maybe they could, tra- I mean, he is making like 2.7 million. So, you know, that's, that's freeing up a little bit of the salary cap if they get rid of him. So we'll see. Yeah. But like you said, I think depth, but there is a decent offensive line draft here too. I don't think there's any proverbial studs like there were last year, but it's deep where you could probably, you know, uh, like you said, is there still a chance they go left tackle in the draft? And there's probably, I'd say, a 15% chance still uh, that they do that. Um, you know, but, yeah, uh, interesting how the line looks now. And then, uh, you know, the defense shaped up a little bit too. Two linebackers that they brought in, uh, in Condon Roberts from the Dolphins and Cole Holcomb from the Redskins, or I'm sorry, the Commanders. Still haven't gotten used to that one. Um, <laughs> both decent guys, good depth. Uh, my only concern is neither one of them are really adept at pass defense as a linebacker, but neither was Spillane, and he's gone. Um, a little, still a little disappointed in Spillane because I, I, it's funny. I didn't like him playing every down, but I loved him coming in off the bench and playing a few downs. That's what I think his specialty. That's I think where he was best. Um, so you replace him with two guys that are probably a little bit better all around as a linebacker, just not as good and effective in the past defense. And neither was Spillane for that matter. So um, I don't know if you'd call that a push, but I think both of them are better pedigree of linebacker. It, it, it really makes you wonder what they're going to do is exactly as, like you said, you, you now have two inside linebackers that are good, but they're not good at coverage. So what do you do? I think the answer lies in maybe a safety. Maybe you ha- use that safety as your, your coverage linebacker or something like that. We'll see. I kind of, if that's the case, bring back Terrell Edmonds. He he would he would do very well in that because you already have. I think you have KZ. Yeah, you, you got you KZ, KZ back. Um, yep. So you basically maybe play all three safeties out there. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? We forgot though. Uh, I'm sorry. They they brought in Nate Herbig from the Jets. Mm-hmm. Um, my mistake. Uh, which. Interesting guy. Um, that's the one of all the signings. He's the one that's, I think, going to be a boomer bust because he's kind of got an attitude about him. Uh, you know, he, mm. he can, he, he's been known to get in fights in practice. He, he's had a lot of penalties. Now this past year, he had a great year at the jets, uh, you know, and he, he can move people like Kendra green. One of the reasons he was attractive to the Steelers back when they drafted him was he was a really tenacious player. Uh, he didn't have the height, but he played at that height for his size. And then that kind of just went away. We never really saw that again until he got penalty after penalty after penalty, like he was, you know, Evgeny Malkin. Uh, and, you know, but the other thing was he also ended up in Ben's lap or behind Ben, which right. was never good when you're at center. Uh, and to his defense, center wasn't his natural position. Still, it was a, it was a bad, it was a, it was a bust. Um, this guy, can he maintain a cool head. If he can, he did a pretty good job for the jets last year. And he's, he's a, her big fits in. Well, he's a big guy. Uh, He'll push you around. He's tough to move. And he, for a big guy, he's very quick off his feet. So 
Um, hey, a great signing by him. And again, he could be, he could really add depth to that line. But um, so I, I did miss on that one, Joe. Sorry, I forgot about talking about him. Oh, no problem. Um, so, yeah, it, it seems like the offensive line got a little bit of a, I don't want to say maybe a, a change in philosophy or something like that, but it definitely seems like their philosophy is we're going to run and we're going to emphasize the run and, you know, running in defense and, and hope that Kenny Pickett helps a little bit, which I think is perfect. Yeah, no, I think so too. I mean, and, and I think, uh, I think Harris, you owed this to Harris. Uh, he played behind a horrible line, his rookie year. Uh, last year's line wasn't much better of an improvement. I think Harris has to play better himself, but this is going to help. Uh, and I really would like to see how this is going to come together. I think it's really going to be a fun trip out to St. Vincent this year to see these guys, uh, how they come together and they play together. And again, as you said, maybe they draft a guy too. So yeah, offensive line is probably one of the more interesting things going into the season now, which it wasn't at all. It was a big concern. I think yeah. they've addressed it. I think it's better. Uh, how much better can it get though? Right. Um, well, you could replace Dan Moore with, with, a with somebody you draft, uh, good. Um, I think James Daniels is fine. I don't think they're going to move James Daniels. He, he quietly also had a very good year, uh, at right guard. So, uh, Daniels is solid. I, I agree with you on Cole. Um, I think you leave him there, but yeah, uh, real interesting how this offensive line looks now. Uh, but I could see, you know, it, it's an older offensive line too, part of it. So I could see them bringing in youth. And if they bring in youth, I think Dotson is as good as gone. Uh, he won't, he will be on a cut list. Yeah. And Kendrick Green. And Kendrick Green. Yeah. I think Kendrick, if I'm Kendrick Green right now, I'm, I'm pretty worried about my job. I'm, um, I'm putting in applications at like Panera and Olive Garden and <laughs> Burger King and stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting that, I'm getting that resume ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, because yeah, I just, uh, unfortunate things didn't work out. And, you know, he's a guy where I thought with his body structure, I thought if after that rook disastrous rookie year, I thought if he really hit the weight room, he could come out of there like just an absolute bear, just solid muscle. Uh, and it just, it hasn't come to fruition. It didn't so happen. I don't, I don't think it's going to. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And they know. Um, back to the linebackers though. Uh, guess what? Devin Bush is gone. Devin Bush is gone. Uh, he went to Seattle on a one-year deal. So even the rest of the league is like, whatever, dude. We'll just, well, I guess we'll give you a chance. Right. And I, we talked about, I was really hoping he'd get Van Der Esch from the Cowboys, who was also on a one-year deal worth $2 million, And he had the best career he possibly, year he had. He had a tremendous season. Uh, Devin Bush did not have a tremendous season. It wasn't horrible. It was okay. But, you know, I know you posted about that. You were one of the first guys out there in the sports media to put it out on, on Twitter that he was gone. Um, and you put all the laugh emojis, and I was laughing with you. But at the same time, in, in a way, you're kind of crying because he also is goes down as a bust. I mean, we moved up to get him. He was this great guy out of Michigan, tremendous athlete out of Michigan. He just – what else could we have gotten in that year? I mean, you think back to that, and, uh, yeah, he was just a bust. He didn't work out here. Um, and, I, and you can debate, hey, you got hurt, you're never the same, or some people say you can get that injury, come back and be better. It just never worked out for Devin Bush and the Steelers. So it, it just, it, unfortunately, it's funny that somebody would take a run on them. Um, it would have been funnier if they would have given them like four years, 11 million, you know, or four right. years, 17 million. But ultimately, right. I think it's also a pretty sad note in Steeler history. It's a shame. And, it just goes to show, you know, yeah, you know, we just assume when somebody has an injury, oh, they'll come back better than ever. Oh, it's no big deal. It's like, well, you never know. And and a lot of times it's it's just mental. Yeah, he, it happens. Yeah. yeah, no doubt he was a good kid. He wasn't like a Kendrick Green. He's likable. Um, teammates liked him. They wanted him to do well. And it, it just, you know, um, just for where he was drafted and for what we did. And again, that's really out of the Steelers wheelhouse. We never saw them go move up to get a, a player uh, and they move up to get him. They were so sure. And again, don't want to bring in a lot of drama on this, but how are they so sure? And how do they come up so short on that? Uh, and, we, and we talked about that this year. We, we talk, we've talked about for a couple of weeks now on your podcast here, 
how this draft is probably one of the most important drafts they've had in five to seven years, maybe even over a decade. They can't miss like they missed on Devin Bush. They got to have their cards right. Uh, because right now, the way I look at this, they're blowing the rest of the AFC North out of the water with what they're doing. The Browns haven't impressed me in the offseason. The Ravens, no. we can talk about that in a second. The Bengals <laughs> haven't impressed me. And, and the Bengals still need a few tools, I think, before they take that next step. Uh, and, and the Ravens are a hot mess. They're a real hot mess. There's the, the potential is there. If you, if you hit on the draft, you might, you might, uh, yeah, you might yeah. take it to the next level. Um, the, the, the thing about Devin Bush is I think they were just obsessed with getting the next Ryan Shazier. It's like, we need that Linslide linebacker that can also cover tight ends and wide receivers and, 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 and do it all. And there is just not a whole lot of inside linebackers that could do that now. It's just, no, it's just um, not happening. So hopefully they just, I don't know if it's a change of philosophy. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, maybe they'll get somebody else. Maybe, I, maybe. now I wonder, and we were talking uh, with a couple other Twitter guys here this past couple of weeks. Now you have to wonder if Parker Washington, uh, also a Penn state wide receiver there may come into fruition because he's one of the few wide receivers in the draft. He's not going to get drafted for his outside playability. He is a slot receiver. That's all he's ever going to be. But he's very, very good. And I think that's something Kenny Pickett needs. Um, I, I would like to see if they can get a Parker Washington in that second or third round. I'd be okay with that. I, I think I'd be more comfortable with him as a third round pick than the first or second. But uh, that automatically is becoming a very real possibility. They may try to grab him uh, for that slot job that, that would help out. Because they who's need to the, add another guy. Who's the Penn State safety? Uh, Jair Brown. I've heard him. I've I've seen a mock draft where they take Joey Porter Jr. in the first round and like in that guy in like the second or third round or something like that. It's like sure, sure. Let's just take bring the whole Penn State team. Let's I don't know how much that would go over all the Pitt fans. They'll, they'll, I mean, I, I have <laughs> one guy. Uh, yeah, actually work with him with Cumulus Radio. Uh, he's a Pitt diehard, and every once in a while with Friar Muth as well, we'll get a we are out of him. I don't know if he could deal with two defensive backs from Penn State, but I'd be fine with Jair Brown. In some instances, I'd be fine with Jair Brown over uh, Joey Porter Jr. He led the team in tackles the last two years. He's a stud running back stopper, uh, and he he can cover the slot and the tight end very well. Uh, he gave up zero touchdowns to tight ends in his career. In his career, uh, he gave up two touchdowns total. Uh, he is a, uh, a maniac out there. Uh, Ohio State really had no answer for him this year in that game where Penn State led well in the fourth quarter and blew it. Uh, James Franklin, classic blow, you know, blow it out of the water, screw it up uh, when they moved. Um, uh, his name's escaping me now. Um, his dad's going to go to the Hall of Fame. But they, they Harrison. Uh, Harrison. Harrison Jr. They moved Marvin Harrison Jr. to a slot. And he never adjusted Jaya Brown over to cover. And that's what kind of lost him the game because they had shut Marvin Harrison Jr. down that entire game up until that point. It's, it's beyond beyond his comp comprehension. It's like, well, what if we yep. take our good guy and just move him? It's like, oh, no, no, we, we can't do that. Yeah, but I, I still go back to I wouldn't be shocked, Joe, if, if they may go for an offensive lineman in that first round um i don't i think linebacker the inside linebacker is probably not up for grabs anymore i think they feel like they got depth there so they're probably not going to waste a first round pick so now i think that we can kind of slide that one over and i think you're right i think it comes down to either a tackle uh, or possibly one of these defensive backs or, or a defensive back. lineman or yeah you know what defensive lineman it, it, it just all depends I've seen Joey Porter Jr. going as high as like 10 and I've seen him going as low as like 20. So who knows? Who knows what, yeah. what's going to happen and who's going to be yeah. available? And shame on us. Uh, you know, we forgot to talk about this in the last podcast. That kid out of Georgia. There's a lot of places that have Jalen Carter falling to the Steelers now. This is a kid that until he had that unfortunate mistake uh, where unfortunately, you know, a, a staff member dies uh, and it seems like he's, he's at least come to, he, he pleaded, no, not, he pleaded guilty, no contest. 
Uh, he's not going to go to jail for the rest of his life. He'll he'll live with this for the rest of his life, unfortunately for him. But all that did was that ruined his chance of getting to be a top three draft pick, assuming. Uh, and now uh, there's a lot of mock drafts, a lot of experts saying he's going to fall right in the Steelers' lap. And, man, Joe, if he falls in the Steelers' lap, whew, hard to pass him. <laughs> you, it's really hard to pass I him. Mean, um, he never would has, I dreamt that he would be there. I know that that would be amazing. That would be that would be just yeah. You you can't pass that up. Um, there are just so many. It, it, it's not just that that unfortunate incident that that was a red flag. Uh, he now maybe it's all related, but when he had the so that happened right around the time of the combine when he got arrested and all that stuff, and then they had the Georgia Pro Day, and he he seemed. Uh, heavier and really hasn't done anything so but that could be the related to you know this whole incident and stuff like that um when you have now when you have you know there there's there's um concerns with him about maturity but when you bring him on to the Steelers and bring him on to a defense with right next playing right next to Cam Hayward and playing real close to TJ Watt and and with with you know this the established franchise that the Steelers is that's you know stable, they could take someone like that that that's a bit of a you know immature person and basically teach them. It's like, hey kid, this is this is what it's like to be a pro. And yeah, you can't just you have great natural ability, but you need to harness it so we could we could help you. So it, it could it could really work if if it, oh. if it happens like that. That would be the ultimate stiller dream, would it not? Like he comes here, Cam Hayward takes him under his wing, JJ or Watt, TJ Watt takes him under his wing, and he he come becomes this great defensive lineman for the Steelers and the rest of history. Uh, I can that happen? Maybe, but like you said, I mean that, that's tragic. I mean, put on a few pounds. I, I would. I mean, you know, somebody died um, because he was racing. A horrendously stupid mistake, um, and that's not something you recover from. I I, I was. Uh, in an accident, a bad accident on, on I-80 when I was in college. Um, I lived through it, but uh, to this day, you know, it's still like beyond I-80 when it's kind of a little snowy or slushy still kind of terrifies me. Now, nobody died, but that kind of thing, that sticks with me and that's a minor incident. Yeah, I can't imagine what this, this has to be in his head. So yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, the gods carved this kid out from granite. They gave him a football body. They gave him everything you could possibly want. And Georgia's coach basically said the last two national titles, we won because of him. Yeah. And that's saying a lot with all the present company considered on that, on those Georgia Bulldog teams for the last three years. Uh, he's the guy you single out. Uh, so, you know, I mean, he's got everything going for him. And then this happens. So, yeah, that's so 17th pick comes up, Joe, and you have one of those defensive backs. And you have Jalen Carter. What do you do? I think it's, you got it. Oh. You got it. You when something like that falls in your lap, I I would rather take the chance and it be a bust than than to to, to play it safe. He's only twenty one. Yep. You know, when you're twenty one, you're not the you're not the uh, the most mature person in the world. So he has a lot of growing up to do. And this this incident probably made him grow up a lot. And also, you know, they hear things. They he's he's hearing, you know, everybody talk about him and, and, and his red flags and stuff like that. So we'll see how he responds to it. Yep. And, and call me a yinzer, but I, I think there is something to he they bring him on, they go down to St. Vincent College, or still one of the only professional teams left that does that. They go away, they get down there, they get him at that camp, and something just happens to some of these players. And and I think, again, uh, man, he's got – he'd have two great, great, uh, you know, not only football uh, guides, but life guides. I mean, talk about two stand-up guys. I mean, Cam Hayward, he's right up there, Joe, with with Troy Palomalo and and Heath Miller and – like the uh, ultimate stealer. Yeah. Like, the, like not only was he great on the gridiron, but everybody loves him off. 
he's a Brett yeah. Kiesel. He's a Mel Blunt. Um, you know, he's right up there with all those guys. Franco. He, he, he's one of those guys that, that, that is embodies the culture and that you could, that you could just pass on to the next generation. So, right. yeah, 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 I, 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 yeah. I love Cam Hayward so much. Yeah. There's other guys like John Stallworth. He's loved, but you know, he, he went, he made millions. He's a brilliant person, but he went to Atlanta. Uh, Lynn Swan kind of moved away, came back, horrible run at governor, got crushed. Um, God, that was bad. Um, Bradshaw, you know, the history there. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I think it's, it's, there is a rarity about some of these guys that, um, are beloved by the Stiller fan nation for what they do on the field, but then they embrace us back. And uh, again, he fits right in that mold. And that could be just the kind of guy a, a Jalen Carter needs in his life right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder if they'll get a wide receiver in, in free agency or they'll just rely on the draft. Uh, pro- probably the draft, but I, I think the draft at this point, you never know. Um, but uh, there isn't a ton out there. Uh, you know, you see Juju went to the Patriots for not a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anybody else out there that's just sticking out to me. OBJ. <sighs> Do we want OBJ? <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> said, what, what was that on the, on, uh, on, on the show the other, the other day, he said, you know, how, how, how wouldn't you want him, you know, as a quarterback? So yes and no, but, Again, it's he's not exactly young, and uh, I think you could probably make that up in the draft here. Uh, I agree with you. Um, I, I'd say draft a, a wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else would they need? I mean, I think they're pretty much set. I think when they brought uh, Ogan Joby back to that helped with that defensive line. Uh, I, you know, had they not brought him back, then I think defensive line's probably still in play for that first round pick. But now with him back, uh, and I, I and you, you've said it before too, Joe. I, I believe you, you, you feel this way. Uh, I like him. I think he's a great defensive lineman. If he's healthy, he's a fantastic part of our defensive line. Um, so they brought him back. Um, but yeah, um, uh, it's real. It's real interesting now what it's going to be. It's either going to be, I think the left tackle is definitely a possibility. It's one of those defensive backs, or if Jalen Carter falls to him, wow. Um, yeah, but. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there it's a definite. They did not rest on their laurels. They've gone out. They've been active. You got to give Omar Khan. I'd give him at least. I'd give him an A for effort at this point. I don't think we can really grade this until you know eight or ten weeks into next year. Uh, but so far, I'm pretty impressed. Yep. Yep. And now, now we wait on the draft. Draft time's coming up. Special edition episode. Of- uh, Joey bag of donuts, donut bag. Sorry. We can do it. We can do it live. Yeah. <sighs> it's going to yeah. be a long way. <laughs> I, I said to a friend the other day, we, we were kind of going back and forth on the pit game and he was complaining about a late start with well, a Penn state game night before when they, they won uh, to advance, they, they tipped off at nine 55. Like, are you kidding? I know. Like, like what I are mean, we doing here? <laughs> oh, nine fifty five. So yeah, so uh, that's gonna be like one of those ones where I might have to bring a sleeping bag to your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the first round of the draft is so long. Oh my goodness, yeah, there's so much, there's so much extra crap. Oh my you goodness, just do a page from March Madness and say we're gonna start this sucker at like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. All the guys in the country are gonna take the afternoon off. You know, you start at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Got dinner time. You're rolling through. By the time you get to internet o'clock, time to it's perfect done. yeah yeah perfect make it make it a national holiday yeah start at noon what the heck <laughs> start at noon i, I go back right, to the last podcast I, I like the day where you got up saturday morning eight or nine o'clock we're kicking off we're rocking through three rounds on saturday got God. your bowl of chips you got everything you need leave it me alone so great it was so great that you just focused on that and that's all that's all you worried about the whole day was just was just the draft and and and, yeah. and that was that was mel Ki- mel kuiper is like the santa claus of football he only works one day <laughs> yeah yeah and and it, i mean you had all those years where he said something funny or um was it was it israel 
uh, from the Colts that lit into him the one year. Remember that? Um, because he he said this is why he said because the Colts that year I remember they took um, Trev Steve Alberts, Ed, Steve Edman, <laughs> and Quentin Corriott, and he said this is why the Colts are picking first every year. And he's yeah. right. They both, like, Quentin Corriott had an okay career, but Steve Edman was a, a total bust. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and whoever it was, whoever that 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 uh, Colts executive, like, who is this guy, really? Where, who, who, who is he? Yeah. Where, where did this guy come from? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it really is true. Mel Kiper just made his own. He made an industry for himself, and yeah, yeah. that's yeah. And he's and still he's still doing it. Yeah, now there's all these other guys. And the Raiders even hired the one guy off of NFL Network and thought he'd make a good GM, and that didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's um, kind of funny. A few years ago, Mel Kuyper said the Steelers really should take Jalen Hurts to, to, su- to succeed Ben. And people were like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. And I'm like, that, that would have actually been a really good pick. Yeah, that would have been a pretty damn good pick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, ouch. Yeah. Um, yeah, he has them taking now in his scenario, like there he was taking that Maryland quarterback. The Steelers are taking that Maryland cornerback, um, uh, because like the, the, the other four okay. cornerbacks were already taken. That's not a good idea. You don't take the fifth best of, of, of no. a position in the first round, you take the second or first best of something else. No, and I, I've seen that same too, where where either the cornerbacks are just gonna be a run on the cornerbacks early. Or by the time it falls to them, they could have their pick. It's going to be feast or famine. I agree with him on that. That kid from Maryland, uh, he he's not bad. Uh, I don't like his height. Um, I think he's going to get smoked by the NFL receiver's height. Uh, he's going to have a hard time doing that. He's got the speed. He's got the intelligence. But he, he's all he's a Ike Taylor. Like, I mean, he'll stone cold Ike Taylor. Ball hits the hands on the ground. <laughs> but I just I, – I would not. I agree with you. If they could pick him up in the later round, great. Uh, he is not a to me a first round pick. Oh, we'll see, we'll see. But but it just seems like it just seems like they are locked on Joey Porter Jr. Like yeah. like you know, it's like we're we're overthinking this when we think about other things. It's like if he's there, no doubt he's they're they're taking him unless some freak thing happens. I would agree. Uh, the only thing I can imagine is if Weatherspoon's there from Illinois and Carter, then it's game on. But if they're if neither one of them are there, I think it's Joey Porter Jr. No, it's 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 uh, it's still uh, in that scenario they would still take Joey Porter Jr. Just because they know him. It's this is like yeah. this is like this is like if you work with someone and and they brought their kid to work and and you and you all love the little <laughs> kid. And then that kid grows up and he's like, I want to work with, I want to work at the same company my dad did. The same scenario. Oh, well, yeah. Because oh, we loved you when you were a little kid. And now we're maybe it, was, up. it may have been Ron Cook or it could have been Bob Labriola, but someone had posted a picture of Joey holding him at Super Bowl 40. Uh, there you know, you playing around there. With, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're already in love with this kid. Remember when my one of my favorite Joey Porter memories was when he got onto the field. He basically single handedly won one of the Steelers that uh, playoff game against Cincinnati just by oh, yeah. walking on the field. And the, the, the Cincinnati players like, "What is he doing out here?" Yeah, and they get and he gets. Uh, I forget. Oh, it's gonna kill me, Joe. What was his name? Who got the pit? Was it, it was perfect that got the original flag? I think Pac Man. It was maybe it was Pac Man yeah, Jones. It was one of the two. So it was either Jones or it was perfect that he baited. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of Stiller fans listening or going to listen to this podcast in a few days and say, it was a, uh, you, you guys did with, we just, know it's one of them. It, but, it, I mean, yeah. Joey it's, Porter knew exactly what he was doing. He had this big smile on his face, just, just going out there. They're like, what is he doing? What is he doing? He just yeah. totally drove him crazy. Yep. And, uh, that gave, that gave him what, like, I think a 30 yard field goal at that point. Something like that. Yeah. It was just yeah. penalty on top of penalty until it was a chip shot field goal. Yep. Yep. Oh, uh, Bengals are always going to bangle. It's they are. You think you could count on in life, but the Bengals are always going to screw it up. Yeah, they're going to bangle it. <laughs> All right, sir. Hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. I'll see you. Take care.